In this video, we're going to discuss something called the fundamental equation. And you know, for something to have a name like the fundamental equation, it must be something that is extremely foundational to a field. And the fundamental equation surely earns that reputation. So uh, basically what we're going to be looking at here, we've talked about the first law of thermodynamics, where we've defined that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's always conserved and transferred in processes of heat and work. And the second law of thermodynamics gives us a lot of power to be able to predict spontaneity, predict whether a process is going to happen or not. What the fundamental equation does is takes both of these ideas, takes the first law of thermodynamics, conservation of energy, and the second law of thermodynamics, prediction of spontaneity, and blends them together into one equation that can do both at the same time. So how do we do that? Well, first, let's start with the basics, right? So of course, first law of thermodynamics is du is equal to dq plus dw, right? So now if we consider a reversible process, right, we know that we can re-express dq in the following fashion, right? So we have a definition for the entropy, right? We know that the entropy is just equal to dq over t for a reversible process. So we know we can re-express dq as TDS. So if we make that substitution here in the first law of thermodynamics, we get what's called the fundamental equation, TDS plus DW. Now we always consider pressure volume work, so the fundamental equation is usually written in the following fashion, TDS minus PDV. Right, so this guy is the fundamental equation. Fundamental equation. Right, and so just like I teased up in the beginning, right, it's still a re-expression of the first law of thermodynamics, but now it's expressed in terms of entropy. So we can use this same machinery that we've built up to predict spontaneity within the first law of thermodynamics. And what makes this really useful is that since all of the other thermodynamic potentials that we've discussed rely on a change in internal energy, we can re-express those in, in terms of the fundamental equation as well, right? So let's take uh, one example, let's take enthalpy, right? So if we start with our definition of the enthalpy, we know it's H equals U plus PV, right? If we want to get a differential here, then we have dH is equal to du plus PdV plus VdP. Now, what we can do, we have du there. We can plug in our fundamental equation to bring entropy into play, right? So we'll have uh, TdS minus PdV plus PdV plus VDP, right? Obviously, you can see that we get something canceling out here. PDV cancels out with PDV. So we end up with the final expression, DH is equal to TDS plus VDP, right? When we use the fundamental equation, we get this expression for the enthalpy. Let's keep going. Let's uh, look at the Hemholtz energy. So if we look at Hemholtz, right, what's our definition for the Hemholtz energy? We have A is equal to U minus TS. And if we get a differential, that's DA is equal to DU minus TDS minus SDT. And then again, we plug in our fundamental equation, plug that guy in here, we get TDS minus PDV, minus TDS, minus SDT. And again here, we get some cancellation, right? So these TDS terms cancel out. So from there, we end up with an expression for the Hemholtz energy of negative PDV minus SDT. Okay, fundamental equation of Hemholtz. So when, whenever people talk about the fundamental equation, usually they're talking about this guy uh, with du, 
But uh, sometimes you'll see any of these referred to as the fundamental equation. So uh, if you look at lecture notes online, you might find other sources that have one of these listed as the fundamental equation. Usually, a lot of people will have the Gibbs energy version of the fundamental equation. So let's look at that guy. So for Gibbs, we know that the definition of the Gibbs energy is U plus PV minus TS. And so if we look at the differential of the Gibbs energy, we got du plus PDV plus VDP minus TDS minus SDT. Okay, here again, let's plug in our fundamental equation and see what we get. So we have TDS minus PDV plus PDV plus VDP minus TDS, minus SDT, right? We get this long differential, but we get a lot of stuff that cancels out there, right? So negative PDV cancels with positive PDV. This positive TDS cancels with this negative TDS. So then we're left with the final expression of DG equals VDP minus SDT. Okay. So these are all of our thermodynamic potentials re-expressed in terms of the fundamental equations, right? So um, what we can look at here, right? The reason why these guys are so fundamental, right? We've derived all of these and let's kind of look at what power this truly gives us. And I think the best example of that is if we look at the Gibbs energy, right? So if we start with this Gibbs differential, let's say we start with this guy. VDP minus SDT, right? So we're starting with this guy. If we take a partial derivative, right? Let's say we take a partial with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Think about what I would be doing there. I would be isolating one of these thermodynamic variables. Let's take a look at what that looks like, right? We have DG with respect to T at constant pressure, right? Then this differential becomes V dp dt at constant pressure minus s dt dt at constant pressure right and if i look at this term right obviously again here we know that if pressure is changing at constant pressure that's going to be zero right so this guy cancels out to zero dt over dt that guy's just one right so what we've effectively done here since this first term cancels out, this guy goes to 1, then we have dg dt at constant pressure is equal to negative entropy, right? So we get these types of relationships from the uh, fundamental equations that we can actually really interpret and get some powerful results here. So what we see here, since this uh, variation of Gibbs energy with respect to temperature is equal to the negative entropy, well, from the second law of thermodynamics, we know that the entropy is always increasing in any real process, right? So since this guy is always going to be positive, that means that this relationship is always going to be negative. So that tells us that the Gibbs energy will always decrease for any increase in pressure, right? So or for any increase in temperature, excuse me. So uh, G will increase will decrease, my bad, will decrease for any increase in temperature, right? So when you vary the temperature, this, this relationship between the Gibbs, uh, the Gibbs energy and temperature is going to always be negative since S is always going to be greater than zero. So this, is, this highlights how we can use the first and second law of thermodynamics to be able to isolate these types of relationships when using the fundamental equation. So because you get these types of foundational relationships from the fundamental equations, we actually call the variable relationships that we get here natural variables, right? So these are actually your natural variables.
for each of these thermodynamic potentials, whichever variables are, are being changed in each of these fundamental equations, right? So for example, for the internal energy, right? The internal energy, its natural variables are entropy and volume, right? Since that's what's changing in its fundamental equation. Same thing here for enthalpy. For enthalpy, its natural variables are entropy and pressure, right? And for the Helmholtz energy, its natural variables are volume and temperature. And then lastly, for our Gibbs energy, right, our natural variables for Gibbs are pressure and temperature. Right. So these are actually what we would call the natural variables for each one of these thermodynamic potentials. So you can see that the fundamental equation really does provide foundational knowledge in thermodynamics and gives us the natural variables for each of our thermodynamic potentials.